So with such a proud history of transporting French presidents from one important meeting to another, why shouldn't the Citroen C6 be considered as the Rolls-Royce of France? What other car boasted its own architect-designed garage for £112,000? Yeah, the main Rolls-Royce model of the day was around £250,000 compared to mid-30s for the C6. In fact, Citroen had even defined the rivals in this class for the car, and here they are, as well as a profile of the type of people who'd buy the car. In fact, even the marketing was pretty clear about what Citroen was majoring on in terms of perceived strengths for the C6. So for me, in terms of design, I think it's a great looking car. I think the long overhang at the front and the short at the rear is a contrivance to make it look purposeful. I think it does that. Um, controversially, as is my way, I would say that these 18 inch wheels are an inch or possibly two too small and that the car rides slightly too high in its normal setting however i do realize by changing that would be like putting lipstick on winston churchill so i've no intention of doing that um but the car's head turner pretty much to my eye great from every angle i know it's a um, marmite car it does divide opinion but in my opinion she's beauty I don't know what you think, let me know. It's a big car as well, so it is imposing when you see this bearing down on you with the daylight spot lamps on. Then, you know, it is a big mirror full of car. And you've got headlamp washers. This isn't the top model, this is the intermediate model. This is the Lineage uh, model. So you've got headlamp washers, obviously alloys. In this one, you've got half leather, which wouldn't be my choice. I'd obviously I'd have the tan leather myself uh, in the car, but it is what it is. In terms of boot space, it's 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 not bad. It's plenty, to be fair. It's it's shallow in height, but it's deep and it's wide. And also, uh, the rear seats fold down. Now in terms of the interior, forgive my weird Heath Robinson bar, that's to help me with my filming. So I stick cameras on that. And uh, what I've done is I've, cable tied it on 
to stop it rocking and I've got nothing to cut the cable ties with so obviously in the normal course of events I would move that but I can't I'm afraid. Um, so back here uh, I think I've done this before when I picked up the car but here's my knees um, I'm six foot two and I've got the seat set for me as well so actually it's pretty good headroom is all right not brilliant um, the back of a Skoda Superb would be bigger than this for sure I've had a couple of those cars and they're massive in the back I think what I do like here though is you've got a very flat floor you can see there's nearly a, a lump there and that does make for uh, quite a roomy feeling in the back here and actually your feet can comfortably go under the front seats as well so that's great and um, the thing I would say is not great here, that, that thing, look for adjustment on it, it's just way too low. I mean, I've got long arms, and you just have to lean in, you lean in like this, if you lean on it. So that's a bit odd. That one didn't um, get well thought about. I quite like some of these little features like that. It's nice to have your, um, your centre belt is tucked away there. You've got, you've got sunscreeny jobbies there, which is all very French. Um, of course, you've got a very good smattering of ashtrays. Um, but no, it's a comfortable place to be, for sure. Uh, in the front there, more of the same. What I would say about this car, in the most un-Citroen-like way, it's built very, very well. So this car's done 100,000 miles. I think they've been hard ones, from what I can tell. And there's not a squeak, there's not a rattle, there's nothing, everything pretty much when it's clean, which it isn't at the moment. It's like brand new. I often bemoan cars of this age and mileage because they've gone through on the bolsters. It, you know, that is the most common problem I see on a lot of cars this age. This one, not a jot. Slightly creased there, but you'd expect that as part of its charm, but not a hole or a, a wear mark or anything. Um, is it attractive? Is it luxurious? Not really. Uh, very well built. Um, big slabs of stuff. You know, it's sort of slabby. Plenty of room. The side pockets are huge. The glove box is big. There's a little cubby over there by the driver. There's centre space there. So, yeah, there's absolutely plenty of space. It's very comfortable and it's a nice place to be, but it's very dark. Everything's black and grey and I would choose for a lighter interior if I could. So I'd definitely, for me, not the light leather, I'd have the tan leather if I had a choice, but clearly you get what you're given in terms of cars that are available. So uh, happy with this no particular problems luxurious no very well built yes comfortable very comfortable plenty of space yes not quite as much as you expect given the size of the car and certainly less than a um skoda superb for example but yeah absolutely no complaints otherwise very happy in terms of other matters like uh fuel consumption etc not a cheap car to run in any way, shape or form. So the road tax is enormously high, it's something like 550 quid a year. Uh, I'm getting 31 miles per gallon, so I've done a thousand miles. If I can find it again. And I've done 31 miles per gallon, an average 32 miles per hour. Uh, that's a mix of driving, that's real world mixy, mixy driving. So some of it is cruising along dual carriageways, some of it's being a bit more enthusiastic, shall we say. Um, I think that's probably what you can expect. Uh, there's not much more I can say here. The spec's a bit odd in the Linné. Um, you've not got heated seats, despite the brochure that I've got claiming that I have, but I haven't. I haven't got heated seats. I've got full electric this side, but on the passenger side, you've got partial electric, which I think's odd, because surely it would be just as 
economic to just have the same in all the cars, you know, same wiring looms, buttons, blah de blah. Um, <clears throat> I've got no sat nav in here, I don't care, because old sat nav now is hopeless. Perfectly happy with Mr. Google Maps. He's bang up to date and he tells you where the speed cameras are and all that stuff. So I don't give monkeys about that. Um, other than that, spec wise, you've obviously got your suspension, you've got a sport button that seems to do nothing on this, you've got ESP, you've got front and rear parking sensors, you've got a fantastically efficient air con, um, you've got worn buttons on the steering wheel. So I'm not really clear what they do. So one, I get, I, I think that should do with the um, cruise control. And then you've got your generic um, stereo control unit there. And I think that's what's odd about this Citroen is there's a lot of things. So the, the interior to me is built in a different league to a lot of Citroens. I think the materials likewise are built um, and sourced you know, in a different way to what you'd normally get in a Citroen. Yeah, a lot of the stuff, like this thing, and certainly the key, I don't know whether that's the original key, but the key that I've got there is just the standard key. And there's just lots of standard, apparently this is out of the 405, I'm not sure, 406 maybe, the center console. Um, but yeah, it's just standard fare, so it is a bit odd. Uh, but it's certainly a quirky car and I think to be recommended. And a bit like, you know, people say, oh, you're not a real car, Blake, until you've had an Alfa Romeo. Well, this is one of those cars to me, you know, you've got to have one and experience one, come out the other side, um, get a grip of yourself and say, never again, but actually then think fondly of it for the rest of your life. Head up display, you might have seen as we're driving along. If not, I'll try and give you a go of that at some point. But of course, the proof of the pudding this is the driving. So in the uh, UK press release for the Citroen C6, there's a section in there that talks about this car being a way to comfortably move adults long distances and having a comfortable experience and an enjoyable experience. And to be fair, if that was Citroen's brief when designing this car, then they absolutely smashed it. I think for me, the impressions of this car when you get in it and drive it are just the uh, comfort. So the seats are very, very comfortable indeed. Um, the quietness, so, you know, there's very little engine noise. There's a bit of road noise. There's probably more road noise than, uh, than you imagine there's gonna be. However, I haven't got the best tires on this car, so they are fairly cheap and cheerful uh, Chinese tires. So I'm sure with some nice um, French rubber on there, some rich or something then that would probably be improved. There's no wind noise to speak of. There's nothing coming from the mirrors. I mean, the overriding noise actually is the suspension, is the, uh, is the tires and the pitch of patter over the small imperfections. Other than that, it's, it's hugely relaxed. And Citroen made great effort because the glass in this car is uh, laminated all round. So the side windows are laminated uh, as well as the front and rear windows. And obviously that helps enormously with suppressing uh, the noise from outside and it really is very, very effective. So in terms of a place to be and travel and, and go long distances in, I really think that's where this car excels. Where it doesn't clearly excel, I suspect, um, uh, and I think this is really probably the downfall of the car originally when it was launched finally in 2005-2006, uh, is that it's not a dynamic drive in the way that 
a BMW or an Audi, probably less so a Mercedes car. It really is a wafter. It's a wafting Tura. Now I'm putting my foot down now, and I think you know it, it doesn't feel that fast, but I'm doing 80 now. Then you know, so I came from 30 to 80 in that uh, in that small distance there, and it really does build speed. And where it is like a um, a Rolls Royce, and certainly I've only ever driven one Rolls Royce, uh, which was a uh, Silver Shadow Mark II when it was new, so <laughs> you can imagine how long ago that was. Very similar in the way that it sort of imperceptibly builds speed, and you get that sense of planets being wrenched apart um, in terms of what it's doing to the physics. So it's an understated performer, so you get no sense of drama which is really what this is about. I mean, imagine having Chirac or Sarkozy in the back here. They don't want any drama. They've got enough drama with all their uh, alleged mistresses and uh, what have you. So the last thing they want is drama. They want comfort. They want quiet. They want relaxation. And this car would give them that in spades for sure. Again, in terms of handling, it's a hard car to assess. I mean, what it is, um, do you get a magic carpet ride? You know, the famed Citroen magic carpet ride. You sort of do, but what you don't get is much insulation from our little uh, broken up bits of tarmac that we have here in the UK. So find a smooth road, find a resurfaced bit of motorway, bit of dual carriageway and this car is sublime. However, on our normal roads, and I don't know if you're picking up uh, here or not, but on our normal sort of A roads that are a patchwork of, of uh, repairs, then those seem to break their way through the magic carpet protective shield that Citroen supposedly provides you with. But on the whole, I'd say, great. Now, the other thing it it, um, it doesn't do is it doesn't roll as much as you expect. Now, this car's got dynamic suspension, and I have given you a link previously where you can learn all about how the suspension works from people who are much cleverer than me. But this car does have active suspension, so it does change the pressure in the system dependent on the driving conditions and the load that they're under. So that does mean that it doesn't actually roll a lot so you know there's probably more roll than you'll get in an s-line audi for example which is horribly uh, stiff um, but you don't get the big wallowy sensation that you'd imagine from a big old um, french barge like this conversely you don't really get any feedback through the steering particularly so the steering is light um, but really there's no communication, there's no real sense of what's going on under the tyres. Now again, if you drive this car in the spirit that in which it's intended, which is wafting people and luggage about across long distances in absolute serenity, then that won't bother you and it really doesn't bother me, you know, I've done all that. You know, it's not for, not for me anymore. So this wafting around effortlessly is perfect for a um, dodgy old fart of my age. So I think in terms of driving environment, I can't really fault this car, I'd say. Now it's running properly. Um, it's ideal for me. The much maligned Ace and Warner six-speed gearbox when working properly, which this one now is, I'd say is absolutely seamless. It's no, um, it's no more noticeable in its changes than was my eight-speed um, ZF gearbox in my BMW 330 that I stepped out of, which was a 40 grand car. Uh, it's no, certainly no different, I'd say, in those terms. The fact that it's a six speed for me, I think it's better. I think eight now, you know, it's over gilding the lilies. Come on, let's be, let's be honest. Um, I think six speeds are ideal, perfect. This car sits at 70 miles an hour at about 2,000 revs or just under. So I, I think the gear is pretty decent on this. 
So I have no complaints about the gearbox now, now it's working. Um, so all in all, given that this car is, what are we now, 2020, and this is a 2008 car, you know, conceived and launched in 2006, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, its design cycle actually started in 1999, with the intention of replacing the XM when that was when that um, finished production, I think it's an amazing uh, achievement given the age of this car. I mean, it certainly aces the two previous cars I've had, which are an Audi A6, a, a modern one. I mean, you know, a, a 2015 car and a 2019 BMW 330i. Uh, this is a much more relaxed refined, quiet and comfortable car than either of those cars can claim to be. And you know, given its age, that's pretty impressive. Is the Citroen C6, the French Rolls-Royce, is a little bit on the clickbaity side. The car was never intended to be a uh, Rolls-Royce rival. Um, so no, clearly it's not. I mean, there is a sense of the um, Rolls-Royce about it in terms of the sort of wafting nature of the car and the fact that the power always seems adequate, if not um, overly uh, impressive necessarily. Um, but other than that, that's really where the uh, similarities end. Uh, so what this car is, I think, can be summed up by saying, There'll never be another car made like this, in my view. Um, Citroen, I think, certainly won't make one. You know, the world's moved on, so I don't think there'll ever be another car quite like this. Uh, I do think it's a great way to, um, you know, do what it's designed for, really, which is whisking people along the auto routes of, of France in great comfort and, uh, you know, giving a, a fair degree of pleasure. Um, it's a perfectly civilised car to live with and you know compared to those modern cars that I've just talked of there's no real disadvantages here yeah you haven't got sat now great you've got it on your phone and it's better than you get in a car anyway um, what else haven't I got those cars have I can't think of any. What this car has got that those cars haven't is the hydropneumatic suspension, which is adaptable, adaptable, um, active aero, um, double glazed throughout, so laminated windows throughout, an interior that has lasted completely unmarked over 100,000 miles of what I can only think has been uh, heavy use. Um, so there's lots about this car. Oh yeah, the, a sense of occasion. Don't get that in those other two cars. When you when you drive off in those, frankly, particularly the BMW, um, well, no, actually both of them, people just think you're a bit of a knob. Um, you know, you just aggravate other road users just by being alive. This car, there's an interest in this car. People are interested in it. People like to look at it. You know, you get admiring glances. People stop and look around. You know, they wait for it to do its up and down stuff. Um, so, you know, that's all a bit different. This is a car, unlike any of those others, others that I've mentioned, that I can travel to the Lake District in, which I'll be doing next week, you know, with luggage, dogs and all that. But I can also then, which I'll also be doing next week, is drive into a uh, classic car show, park it up next to all the other classic cars and watch people, uh, you know, pour over it and, and have a good look at it. So that's my summation of this car. Um, I hope it's been a bit more grown up than maybe some of uh, my videos, but if you want to see the less grown up ones, here's a link. Um, so it's been great talking to you about the Citroen C6. Keep watching, there'll be more to come for sure. Stay safe, stay tuned, speak to you soon.